Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and I hope you enjoy this paint with me. Today, I'm going to turn this fountain from the Terrain Crate um, by Magic Games Temple Kit into this. Before I started painting, I sprayed these pieces with uh, Citadel Spray Chaos Black. First thing I want to do is get the base color for my fountain, salt gray. So I'm going to be dry brushing um, that gray onto all of this. See how gray that is. And it's a most of the black underneath is going to be gone um, from this coat, but I don't actually want the gray to be uniform. It's mostly going to be uniform since all the black is going to be gone, but we'll see what we can do. As you can see, I'm not um, not working too hard at this part, not being too careful. Um, you can do that with a dry brush. You don't have to be too careful if it's your first layer. You don't really care about the layer underneath. Only with a uh, brush that has been properly, with the paint properly applied. You don't take enough paint out of your brush. You'll just get, you know, paint streaks rather than the dry brushing effect that you want. So. Ooh, the detail is really coming out there, I think. Here. Mm. Details already coming out. Should I be doing this closer? See how I'm holding this? Um, because it's so dry, I'm, I'm not particularly worried about getting the paint off of the thing. You do not want to hold a wet miniature like this, but a dry rest miniature is pretty okay. And again, this is just the first coat. My fingerprints, if I get one, get some, will not be shown. So the I think this paint is too dry, though, for that to happen. Alright, I think I'm, oh, I do want to get in there. Really get in there. Um, so this is a very old dry brush, back when uh, Citadel's had color coordinated brushes. It's been through a lot, but thanks to Mm, brush restorer and brush cleaner by Vallejo. It is still working. I know I haven't treated it kindly. It's not my doing, it's still working. It's definitely what they eat with them because I am not that nice to this dry brushing brush. Now this is going to be completely covered in uh, water. In my water effects. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make certain that this ends up darker than the surrounding because this is going to be underwater. So it'll look it'll look the same color but darker. So I'm going for. I think that will make a realistic Okay. 
think that's this is what it looks like right now. Alright, I'm not gonna bother to clean my brush because we're going to put on the next layer. It should be greenish gray or cold gray. blue gray. Hmm. I think blue gray will be after. Alright, I'm just checking out the color. So greenish gray is pretty green. That's too much. I'll probably use that for H. Cold gray. Cold gray has the tiniest bit of brown in it, which is odd. Or something called cold gray. Let's see what it's like. Since this is such an old, um, gonna be a nice old fountain, I'm not too concerned if I um, put on a spot here or there and it doesn't go the color I want it to be. Oh no, that works. works so well that I think you can barely see it. Only minor difficulties. Don't want to put too much on this area because this area I think is going to stay dark. So the cool gray is mixing in with the gray that I originally had, but still on my brush, so that's why it's not showing up much. Now, let's do that again. There'll be less of the original darker gray on here, so it should come out. A bit lighter this time. You see how I'm brushing at a 45 degree angle? That is on purpose. I am orienting my brush on purpose at an angle. All of these are going to have water too, so them staying a bit darker is fine by me. Now, I think I'll go with a little bit of this green. Just... This, um, sorry, it was, um, gray, green, gray, model color, green, gray, just, uh, more like speckling it, this is 
a bit of my initial um, where it's gonna come to me where age plant growth this is actually plant growth not here just off and on a little bit haphazardly I don't want it to look uniform Stone by Citadel. Hmm. Yeah, we'll give it a go. It's just in a little dropper bottle. And again, it's mixing in with all the grays that I have yet to take off my brush. Let's do it on here first. Yeah, that works. This is actually um, air terminated stone um, for airbrush. I'm using it for this dry brushing, um, because as it's an airbrush, it's going to be a little bit less opaque. And it also means I can move it a little bit around that's why I'm actually doing this crisscrossing motion. So I'm putting it on and then moving it around. Crisscross, 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 crisscross. Uh, on these, this top part here, I'm going to make certain a little bit more on. So this is kind of more like, it's kind of stippling it on there still in a little bit of a crisscross again because it's a little bit transparent allowed me a bit of control push it on and then move it around and i don't want it to be too uniform this so let's just do this one a lot and half of that one and this one right there Hazardly along these edge. Right. Now on the fountain. Gonna use some of this uh, this woodland scenics, I think, for some of the 
green on it. I'm just gonna do a color test. It's approaching good, but I think we need to still do a bit more. Okay, let's do another layer of the uh, terminata stone. Alright, looking stony. Pretty stony, but there's something missing yet to perfect its stoniness. Let's, let's try another layer of this green, but we're going to brighten it up with the alum, um, with the terminata stone. green with the other colors. Let's find out. Plop. Hmm. A little bit of yellowy green might not be a bad. I don't think I want too much of that though. Green, green. Dark green. Definitely too green. But I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, where are you? Let's mix it in with the basalt gray to do it. Uh, uh, no, not the basalt gray. Let's mix it in with the coal gray. Mix it in with the coal gray. Deeper. Dark green. Okay. Air. That'll work. This this higher part, I'm gonna do less green. Since this sort of thing would move down. Highlighting is in order. Let's remove the green from the brush. Alright. Let's try this 
with most of the green taken out. Still a bit present. Highlight is good. I'm not highlighting uniformly. I imagine this will. It's like you're on an adventure, walking through the forest, and then you come to a clearing that, you know, was all in sunlight after your venture into the forest. You see this, and your adventure, this adventurousness is tingling. Your instincts suggest that it is more than just a simple well, as what is it doing out there in the wilderness? And so you approach the well, hesitantly, looking around you as you're going, wondering why there is a well in the middle of the forest. And then when you approach it even closer, I'm now adding a uh, model color white to mix with the terminata stone. This base is not picking up the the terminus stone as well as this is. So let's see what that's like. Yeah. Oop, too much. So you're approaching this guy. This well. And it's like there's music in the air. Not made from in instruments, though. Made from the well and the wind. And you feel a sense of peace. And then the DM decides that it was all an illusion. Or maybe this is a healing well or a rejuvenation well. If you bathe in it, some limb returns to you as you once lost. Mm. Stippling. Um, basically wear into the rock. Now, I so we'll put in the first layer of water effect. See what that's like. I think I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a little bit of this uh, green gray to it. Yeah, 
feels good, actually. Let's see what it looks like. Maybe a little bit more gray, a little bit more green, a little bit more of the um, basalt gray, and a little bit more of the dark green. And now to put it in there. Hmm. adding some black to make it look a bit deeper around the edge. Just using the basalt gray and the forest green and the green gray to get it to the color I want it to be, which is basically whatever looks natural. Um, add in some black underneath to make a bit more shadow. Now it's time to use the Wooden Scenics Fine Turf. And yeah, just laying it on there. I'm gonna lay it on there rather haphazardly until I'm satisfied with the result. And I'm going to put it in the water just around the edges um, and also around the edges of the pool. Uh, more is going to be on this bottom piece than on the, um, on the top tiers. Or, uh, in case it wasn't clear, I'm using the water effects itself as the the glue to keep on all this um, all this turf. Now I'll probably go over it afterwards with um, some glue and water mix, also to mat it back down. But yeah, the initial gluing process is done with the water effects itself. And now, now we have to wait for it to dry before I do anything else. All right. And we're back. Several hours for me, but only a second for you. All right, so it's dried. And I'll just keep show you that. As you can see, the once dry, it's working as a glue for this middle piece. 
And once I put on the second layer, it'll absolutely be working. As a glue, it won't be going anywhere. So st still water, this particular effects is meant to flatten out all on its own. Get into all the little crevices and get out as flat as it can. And just use my wooden scenics to fill it out a bit more. Alright, use some of these water effects to uh, put the woodland scenics around where I want them to be. Uh, yeah, right there. One big old spot is going to be really covered up in the green. And once that dries, I think we're good. I mean, again, I could put on these tubs, make it even. Um, more overgrown. Um, and I could put on some, I could put on some pretty flowers. I could, but I think I want it just a little bit simplistic right now. Here we are, an overgrown fountain for Dungeons and Dragons games or for battlefields. Sometimes you're painting to play a game. Sometimes you're painting for the fun of it. And that was today. Thanks for watching. Happy painting. Bye.